Our greatest enemy right now is not the coronavirus itself, it's fear, rumors, and stigma. And our greatest assets are facts, reason, and solidarity. WhatsApp, misinformation, and the coronavirus. As mass panic over the coronavirus grows, the popular social media app, WhatsApp, appears to be the main platform for the support and spread of misinformation. The messages that are either forwarded or copied and pasted, not forgetting the audio messages, often claim to be health advice from supposedly credible sources such as Stanford Hospital Board or from anonymous doctors who have the cure for the virus. Unfortunately, as, as countries around the world go into lockdown, WhatsApp and other such platforms become a lifeline and hotbed for pseudoscience that risks un undermining the efforts of governments and public health officials. We have been told via WhatsApp that blowing a hairdryer up one's nose can kill the virus, gargling vinegar, drinking warm water, or even eating bananas are cures for the virus, all of which have been debunked. This sort of misinformation is shared multiple times, and because WhatsApp is encrypted, unlike Facebook, it can't be vetted and blocked before sharing. We saw a similar thing during the Ebola outbreak when drinking salt water was pushed as a cure. My fear is that all this bad advice is being taken in and is often not vetted by the recipient and then acted upon as we often believe that if the solution sounds plausible, can protect one's family and is organic, then it's worth sharing. After all, what harm can it do? We don't stop to think that those behind the messages may be after money or clicks. WhatsApp has made some changes to prevent the spread of misinformation by limiting the number of times a message can be forwarded and by adding a forwarded label. However, we should check the facts online before sharing and engage directly with trusted and official sources for important information. This will go a long way to overcoming the menace of misinformation that may lead to very grave consequences. The bottom line is, you know, we need to vet the information we come across yeah. because it can do so much more harm than good. Um, and we need to look at the sources, where they came from. We should also take responsibility for misinformation if we do not verify um, the, you know, the materials that we come across before forwarding them. So it's just really, you know, how dangerous misinformation, especially around this coronavirus, um, you know, pandemic um, can cause so much damage. So we just need to be very careful. So um, I think that was um, uh, your topic last week. Okay. And we talked about um, you know, information management to announce that almost everybody seems to be, you know, um, a journalist, and then some will ask you to verify because they don't want to fall short of uh, <laughs> peddling, you know, fake fake news. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but really, and that's why now, like I said before last week, I I I, have, I've, I tend to stay away, you know, for now. And then I don't, I no longer forward information, except it is very necessary and verifiable you know, from, um, you know, international platforms or organizations that I know and I go to confirm from their website, you know, then I can pass that information. But all of this other information flying around, oh, this happened in Agege, oh, share it so that it will reach those in authority, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I take exception to them. Uh, because there seems to be a lot of misinformation going around now. Yeah, and, and, and just and to add to that, um, Libra said misinformation well. or mischief? Mischief, yes, mischief. mixed yes. in with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I, think, yeah I think it's more mischief. Mm. So f for me... No, sorry, quickly. Yeah. Like we also say, let's also put the, the pre blame where it is. In the absence of information, you yes. know, mischief makers are going to fill in the gap. Okay. And that's why government need to consistently you know, engage okay. with information. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of mischief that a lot of people, um, it's so easy to, a lot of people are still on the high of, of having access to, to mobile or to the internet. And they see these things almost as a joke or then on a high. 
and they, they just they like the control they like the power mm. you know the, the feeling Can you know most people. people feel powerless in mm. their day-to-day -day existence mm. yeah and so suddenly to be able to to share information to to and influence just the way people influence react, the way people yeah. react. Um, so that's so there's a high level of mischief factor in terms of how people uh, misuse information or WhatsApp specifically and, and then push out this information. You, you see that a lot. I mean, you know, like I said uh, previously, I've had to remove myself from certain groups um, because you find there people just um, just throw out any kind of information and you ask them, do you, are you sure about this thing? Say, eh, I, I, I just wanted you to see it first. Then. I, I'm, I'm verify. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, verify. Like you yeah. Yeah. You're not a child. Yes, I mean, you, 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 you went to school. You think. You, you think. Yeah. Is it possible yeah. that you think about it first before you share this information? So I think that that mischief factor is something. And then because there's hardly any consequence yet. Yes. Um, no, no. On, we're playing on, into yes. the hands of hate yes. speech bill. Yeah, but no, no. It's, I don't want to go it's, that it's way. Not a question of, it's not a question of mm. um, hate speech. Or fake news. Because I've mm. talked about this before mm. when we talked about hate speech. Look, remember that in or the UK... social media bill. In the UK, for example, they have this thing where existing laws can adequately deal with this. I remember that UK diver, the young guy who was a swimming a bit diving um, the young guy yeah. and people he was vilified on social media because he, he in the, during the london olympics he didn't do quite well and there's a lot of people abusing him and they use the existing laws to deal with those, those people uh, yeah yeah there are libel ah, so, laws i so said you it don't before. need to have new sets of laws because at the end of the day the fundamental will always apply and the fundamental thing is that these things, whether it's online or offline, have real life consequences. Yeah. Um, and so if someone is hurt, Sorry, someone's injured, in someone um, suffers some business um, yeah. failure, no, there are real call, life I, consequences. I wanted to just give you the legal, um, because there are sometimes big questions that have uh, followed you know, issues like this are, is okay, what if I am not the author of such information? I only forwarded the information. Okay. You know, under the same libel law, for the fact that I received it from you, I'm the one. You, all, you, are, you published it without verification. So okay. I will tend to sue the bigger pocket. If you are the bigger okay. pocket, whether you are the author oh, or not, wow. so you are the one that, that spread it. That's why I just okay, wanted okay. to. Okay, no, I'm glad you said that because um, I was going to come in on that to say, actually, why I like Uche's advocacy is that I actually feel we can do something about it in, in terms of, it's almost like an evangelistic thing. Like what Emeka is doing, I do it as well. If people close to me bring that, now they've stopped, it's massively reduced because I do, a, I do a showdown with them. If somebody close to me starts bringing it, because it's almost like misery likes company, the same people that are peddling this nonsense, when you listen, they're so depressed because they've put themselves in a world where all this fake news is real. Mm -hmm. And then they come, when they call you, they, you know, and because they know I don't want to hear it. And my first thing is I don't watch anything. I don't listen to anything. I'm not interested. If it's not on the general, you know, the platforms yeah. that are verified, I'm not interested. But, you know, they then start saying, oh, but, you know, and every time they want to make a sentence, they bring in. I said, where did you get that from? And usually it's WhatsApp. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know. And I said, look, I'm not interested because the world they live in is so, they're haunted by that world and they want to drag you into it. Yeah. I said, I'm sorry, the reason you, you like my piece and you're coming to me and you like the space I'm in is because I don't clog up my mind with this kind of nonsense. So don't go and invite me to your own you know, party because I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. So I like it because on a daily basis, I'm doing my own version of putting people in their place. And so at least the people immediately around me, they've learned their lesson. I, you know, so at least I think I've done my job right. They've learned not to bring that nonsense near me because... You know, so I'm not so much even after the mischievous people, because those ones, they can't help them. You're dealing with those who are soaking up this thing without processing it first, and then passing Sometimes it on. Sometimes you can't blame them also. Why? Why um, don't you blame yeah, them? That's what I said. I mean, I, I, wanted to, I want to come in on why you can't blame them in a, in, to an extent. For instance, with this, you know, people desperate for a cure, looking for ways to, to sort of combat this COVID-19. And, you know, they were hearing of vaccines and this and that. And it all seems so far away, these, uh, you know, cures or whatever they are supposed to be. Um, and then, you know, we as Africans, I know even with my, my colleagues in the studio, we have our own African remedies and what have you. And so anything that sounds organic and sounds like, ah, you can get these ingredients around your house and everything. And it seems like it's, it, you know, it actually makes sense. People want to, they want to afford it because maybe they're eager to um, be attributed um, that they found the cure or 
they're helping somebody survive this. So, you know, I'll tell you, one thing that I'm saturated up to here now with is uh, people telling me what to do in, in order to make let, sure let, that let COVID does clear. not destroy me. Also I've to been told add, I have to, 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 to see my this. head five times a day, I mean, Uche, two times a day Uche. for five days. I've been told all manner of things. So now I'm shutting it all down. I don't even want to know anymore. You yeah. know, too much information can be really too yeah. much. To, to add to what mm. you have just said, Somebody asked me, sorry, quickly, Chuka. Somebody asked me, said, yeah. there is no cure for this virus. But yet, every day, government is discharging 11 people, 6 people, 19 people, and it means there is a cure for it. That's an information gap that government had not taken advantage of. Even though some persons why are they right, recovering? Why are they recovering? More what, here what are you doing that is making them yes. recover? Okay. You know, so in the absence yeah. of when there's that gap, Others will say, oh, it's malaria, forget, once you take malaria medicine, once you drink a go, because there is a gap. And so you won't blame people that would believe that misinformation because okay. you've mm -hmm. refused to fill that gap. Okay, fair enough. Chuka? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's true, yeah. I, I wondered why they hadn't told us what they were doing. Because it's actually quite simple. Just tell the truth that when the cases are not that serious, it's really just about, you know, this tablet and this and that. And everybody will sort of feel better. Then we know that there are some that, well, they're going to die. And um, because that's what they've told us anyway. And so, you know, we'll be used to it. Um, but I think also, you know, don't forget that the reason why a lot of people just forward messages without thinking and all that is that I think that to listen to proper news is expensive. Because where are they going to listen to proper news? By paying DSTV so they can listen to, you know, um, uh, you know, even, even our own very own... Um, uh, plus TV Africa. <laughs> it's not cheap, you know. Can so I, if somebody's I, going to forward all sorts of things, yeah. you're on Facebook and uh, all sorts of links, you just jump on them and forward them, you know. But if we had, you know, if we could sit and really listen to a lot of good stuff from good places, okay. we wouldn't be doing this. Right. I'll be doing it less. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me say two, two things before we, we uh, round up this. Um, the first thing, though, is I agree with Chuka, uh, access to information is a matter of life and death. Yes. That, that's so true, especially yeah. in the digital space. But, but the other thing, though, with regards to the treatment protocol, um, why I think that the, the government or the health authorities have been very careful in, in, in saying exactly what the treatment protocol is, because we self-medicate a lot. Okay. And, this, yeah. and I think they're careful. There has to be a balance. Yeah, I, I agree. But they're be careful that, um, because you can get most of these drugs off, uh, you don't need Nigeria, the way we get drugs is so free. So um, you saw what happened when Trump was pushing Chloroquine, chloroquine. chloroquine, and a lot of people yeah. started self-medicating, and you had a lot of um, chloroquine yeah, poisoning. You, but they so have to I, be balanced. Yes, Every I day updates. But let's not push people into the direction of, say, these are the drugs, because a lot of people are going to kill themselves. Um, so, not necessarily so, well, uh, Uche, at least you've tried to shine a light on an area of confusion, and, and that's been very helpful. Um, so after the break, I take to exposing what I consider to be some falsehoods um, that are holding us back. Pretty, pretty um, controversial, some would say, but um, here you go. Um, this is why we are the advocates. We can push boundaries a little bit.